Take care. I'm Kevin Perez. Good to see you. Candace Bailey, rather unfortunate she has the play. Oh, tough break. But look who's here. Me! In case you didn't know, I'm Sarah Underwood, and we are coming to you live from the G4 Studios in Los Angeles. Yes, we are. And on the old show today, Ray Park is here live! On Earth, he's Snake Eyes. In space, he's Dark Friggin' Mall. We're going to talk about the Phantom Menace returning in 3D. That's not making it 3D. What are you talking about? That's what you're trying to do. Yeah, you can't say just, you can't say 3D. You gotta, 3D! Oh, good to know. Okay, keep going. <laughs> and later, Matt Myra joins me to play Hot or Not the Gadgets. Today's prawn is a seven inch tablet that wants you to forget about things like iPads and Kindles. I'm sure it does a great job at that. <laughs> And we'll drop into the Asian underground. No, not like that. Jeff Wong and Dropsy are going to take a look at three great Asian films, including a movie about a famous archaeologist and an ancient treasure. Yeah. We should all start calling him Dropsy. Yeah, that's his new name. Dropsy! 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 Dropsy. 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 <laughs> uh, the ODS viewer army invades New Orleans Comic Con. Michael Bean from The Terminator, and Peter Mayhew, better known as Chewbacca. Ah, Chewbacca? Yeah. Can you, uh, you gonna do a Chewbacca? Um, I don't know. So, no. So the, no. so the answer to the question was no. Yeah, no. A for effort. Yeah. You get an A for effort. It's beautiful. Let's spend some quality time with the web, shall Let's. we? We should go around the net. Done. <laughs> For funsies, can we get one more Chewbacca to start oh, it off? This <laughs> is really special. All right, hold on. <laughs> what is What's the trick? What's the trick? That is a, oh, no. a spicy kitty it? cat. <laughs> yeah. No, that's yeah. not. That's it. Yeah, that's a Mardi Gras Chewbacca. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Uh, and at number five today, we have a casual greeting. Yeah, here's a video simply called Sup. Sup. Crash the Match.com servers. It's so <laughs> true to life. Some guys what? slip into your life and then just slide away. Oh. Story of my life. I would never. I would never do that to you. Would never. Oh. Slip in and remain right there. <laughs> for the rest. For the rest. You aren't doing any slipping. I did not mean for that to sound the way it did. It's quite really. There will be no I slipping truly, between you and yeah, I. I'm sorry about that. I get it. Uh, I don't like slip and slides. I don't. I mean, I enjoy them, but I have shattered memories. Why? Like, well, most of my most of my childhood is just is a bunch of shattered memories. Oh, that's but cool. you know, my old man was one of those guys that would like yeah. you know he'd pee on the sidewalk to let you know where Pereira territory begins. <laughs> and so whenever whenever we play with the kids in our court, we'd say, "Hey, come on down." and we'll, we'll do it and, yeah. and never on our lawn because our lawn was pristine you could look at it you just don't touch it that's <laughs> wow. the far away long story longer he put a slip and slide out one time uh -huh. to let us all play on it and to teach us a lesson about playing in our front yard he put it out over one of those big metal rainbird oh. um, sprinkler heads oh, yeah, yeah. that was wow. in the grass so the first neighborhood kid goes sliding down he went, he went on his back actually like he oh. slipped and got up and just had a giant red welt right oh. in between his shoulder blades so I'm hitting it tears coming down his face he's like yeah that's what you get for playing on the front lawn Fun dad, real Slip fun dad. Slip and slide time. Wow. Yeah. I love you, dad. I love you so much more all of a sudden. <laughs> My I'm, dad. Oh, I thought, I thought you were Not finally calling him your dad as well. I was like, great, we're all one big family oh. now. This is, this is an important time. No, I wasn't. And at number four today, the latest fakery from the Onion News Network. Uh, we love the Onion here. And today, the Onion panelists react to a rather angry speech by President Obama. Uh, this notion that somehow I came in here to 800 billion dollars. Do you just want government to do nothing? Why should the government in South Carolina that was kids are in that now in light of this, in light of this speech, uh, analysts are speculating that it could be quite uncomfortable for Americans tomorrow when the president returns to work. It's going to be super awkward. Yeah, I yeah. just don't think we should bring it up. No, I think it'll be fine. I mean, FDR got angry once at one of his fireside chats when he called America a sad sack hobo dump bucket. Oh, no. Sad yeah. hobo dump okay. bucket. To be fair, Obama had good reason to be upset. Uh, what was it? He'd just seen Liam Neeson's The Gray. 
Oh. I didn't. So. I, I didn't know. I forgive everything now. I'm like, yeah. When a movie promises you that it's full of wolf punching, it damn well better have some wolf punching in it. Yeah. That's all I ask. Yeah. Spoiler alert for the gray. There's no wolf punching How in it. How do you do that? I don't know. He had the glass knuckles and everything. Just punch a wolf. Go to the zoo. Find a wolf. Punch it. And that's what the whole previews were about. And nothing. No wolf punching. How much would it cost for Liam Neeson? Forget the wolf. I can get a wolf. You How can't. much would it cost to get Liam Neeson in here? Wiffle Bat Fight Club with a wolf or something. Punch something. Punch something. Yes. Just punch an animal punch in the face, something. Liam. Can we do that? That's, that's, a, that's a PETA campaign that I want to see. I'm behind it. Thank no, you. I'm not. What? Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, so I'm, I'm sorry. Someone said Wolfle Bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That... Wolfle Bat. Yeah. Uh, in at number three today, we have a chat with an eccentric German director. It's a uh, Werner Herzog. Oh. That was totally it. <laughs> Surely he's discussing cinema or existentialism or the meaning of truth. Yeah. Right? Something deep. Actually, he's talking about chickens. What? Hmm? The enormity of, of their flat brain, the enormity of their stupidity is just <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> You have to do yourself a favor when you're out in the countryside and you see chicken. Try to look a chicken in the eye with great intensity. And the intensity of stupidity that is looking back at you is just amazing. By the way, uh, it's very easy to hypnotize a chicken. Uh, they're very prone to hypnosis. And in one or two films I've actually shown that. I like him. Man hates his chickens. I like him. It's funny, it's still true if you replace chicken with Kardashian. So. Yeah, more like more true. Oh. <laughs> and at number two, <laughs> snowball fights are innocent, harmless fun. Yeah, yeah, most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's an exciting video, but the yeah. situation in Syria is worse than I thought. And I think we should all take a moment and really reflect. That is just... I'm pretty sure that was just a snowball fight, Kev. Yeah, you would say that. You know who else would say that? The lamestream media. That's who would say that. I'm not buying it anymore. Oh, my goodness. I'm not buying it, Sarah oh Underwood. Oh, my goodness. Still Punch ahead. Punch a wolf, William. Yeah. yeah. And Punch a wolf. Sorry. An important <laughs> environmental message. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna come down because AOTS is going green after the break, and green is like peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's a filled sobriety it's two test. Ones. Okay, yeah. all right. In two Roman ones. numerals, still two. But uh, nevertheless, we're ready for the number one. So yes, let's give it to ready. Let's do it. Our number one video is a message from the green energy company Ecotricity. Yeah, if our country is going to move away from non renewable energy sources, this is the first step. Universal networks go all green during April for Earth Day. Yeah, once again, G4 is on the vanguard of our efforts. We're going green in yeah. February. Yeah. Yeah. So you can suck on that, Telemundo. Yeah. Okay? So what are we going to do this year? More G-cycling? What's that? 
You know what it is. Compost you know in the dressing room? No, no, it's a great idea, but you gotta think bigger. Okay. Think bigger, Sir Underwood. In okay. fact, think this big. From here on out, Attack of the Show will be completely powered yeah. by, by wind! Whoa! Boom! Straight from Taiwan. Listen, huh. wind power is squeaky clean, <laughs> totally renewable, mostly quiet, and only slightly deadly to migratory birds. Okay. And I that's mean, not normally a problem Kevin, in this studio. Kevin, that's great and all, but don't you need wind <laughs> for wind power? I mean, we're in a closed studio, so okay. how... You know what? Don't be an ass. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's harsh. Of course I've thought of that, Sarah. Hit the wind machine! Yeah! Ah! Look at that! Kevin. I've played the Incredible Machine for years. I know how this stuff okay, works. But Boom! Kevin. Blow it, Kevin. clean, energy, it's just science! Kevin! It spins. Kevin! You're using electricity to make electricity. Where is the power coming from? Oh, where is it? Sarah, that's really simple, actually. Okay. You just follow the cord. Here we go. It's, it's a trail of dreams, really. It's ingenuity. It's America rolling up its sleeves to say hello. Speaking of saying hello, say hello to that canary. He's loving this clean energy. It's clean American coal, Sarah Underwood. And the coal is lovingly hand-gathered by American workers after ancient, untouched West Virginian mountains are clear-cut and exploded into millions of tiny pieces by dynamite. <laughs> that, that doesn't sound very clean, It's Kevin. clean and safe. Isn't that right, Engineer McHenry? again. Fire it up. Put it on turbo. Clean power for everyone. Baldy the Mountain says clean coal is cool. Brought to you by the National Association to unearth all resources eventually. Chris Gore here at Spin Fusion in Los Angeles where I like to practice my karate shop. That's shop, not shop, get it? All right, I'm all out of jokes. It's time for Asian Underground. I'm joined as always by Asian cinema master, Jeff Wong. Now Jeff, today we're looking at films from China and Stool Pigeon looks brutal. I mean, this thing is serious and dark. Um, everyone's yelling at each other. It's like my Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, it's a lot like your Thanksgiving dinner. Stool Pigeon <laughs> follows the world of confidential informants and the cops that hire them. So you get to see this cop and this Stool Pigeon that he has working to infiltrate this heist group and what happens to them and their personal relationships with other people and the consequences that happen because of this life that they choose. <laughs> So the tone of this is very serious, like a Tarantino film. Tarantino obviously was influenced by the Hong Kong action directors of the 80s, and he used that in his movies, and I think Dante Lam is kind of take, picking up where he's leaving off and integrating it in his films. A lot of this movie is very dark throughout, and it's basically a tragedy through and through, like the Hong Kong movies from the 80s. Treasure Hunter looks like Indiana Jones took on the entire German army. Yeah, Treasure Hunter sort of follows the story of a bunch of characters who are all racing to get to this lost city. There's a romance novelist who found this treasure map that her dad owned. There's the Treasure Hunter himself who carries a whip. And then there's these soldiers who are looking for the city to put some demons they have in their past to rest. The violence in it and the action is sort of over the top and cartoony. Yeah, it is a little bit cartoony, but it's also very stylized and very well integrated with their use of CG for a Chinese film with their budget restrictions and stuff like that. They did a really good job of choreographing these fights and working the special effects so it worked to sort of tell the story they were trying to tell. You tell me you want me to see a historical war epic set in China called 1911? I don't know, I think I want to skip it, but you tell me Jackie Chan is in it, I'm in. Yeah, 1911 is chronicling the Chinese Revolution. It's sort of Jackie Chan's passion project. It's his 100th film he's ever made, and it was sort of the 100th uh, anniversary of the revolution itself. So it sort of follows the, the rebels as they're trying to overthrow the Qing Dynasty. It looks epic, it looks big. 
But am I going to learn something? I hate being tricked into learning something. I'm sorry, Chris, you are going to learn something. Uh, one of the issues with the pacing of this movie is they try to cram a lot of history into a two-hour film, but the battle scenes were done really well, and as far as revolutionary military epics go, I feel like this one did a really good job of kind of telling that story, even if it tried to cram too much in it. Thank you, Jeff. You helped perfect my karate shop. And Jeff and I will be back with more goodies from the Far East in the next edition of Asian Underground. Thank you so much, Chris and Jeff. Appreciate it, guys. Dropsy. Dropsy and Jeff. Dropsy and Jeff. <laughs> that sounds like a great buddy pop film. <laughs> oh, ahead. Dropsy. Still ahead, our viewer army marched into the New Orleans Comic Con. Great wow. interviewing Hercules and Chewbacca for our amusement. And later, Darth Maul himself, Ray Park, will be here live to go around. Here's a question for you. Would you give up speaking English forever for a round-trip voyage to the moon? Well, you logged on to G4TV.com and told us what you thought, and we'll have the results after the break. The results are in, and about 63% of you said that you would not give up speaking English forever for a round-trip voyage to the moon. Come on, what's so special about English? I hear Mandarin is really easy to learn, I think. Head on over to G4TV.com for more questions like this and tell us just how far you go. All the news you need to know. February 8th, and here are your top stories. The Super Bowl may be over, but newly discovered pictures circling on the web reveal an unexpected spectator of Sunday's big game, a sniper. Yeah, yeah. U.S. Tactical Supply posted the photos on Facebook yesterday, which looked to be an Indianapolis police sniper holed up in the rafters of Lucas Oil Stadium. They claim the gun was never actually loaded during the game, but of course this is standard practice for any major sporting event, given the high-profile nature of the game and the politicians in attendance. Hey, where do I sign up for this position? Those are good seats. <laughs> now, Amazon is looking to challenge Netflix head on as they're getting ready to release their own standalone streaming service. At this point, unlimited Netflix-like streaming has only been an add-on for Prime members, but Amazon is reportedly looking to expand the service in hopes of directly competing with that other streaming giant. To beef up their slate, they've just inked a deal with Viacom to stream content from the media giant's family of networks. Now, Amazon hasn't officially announced when the all-you-can-eat streaming will be available for non-Prime members, and there's no word on how much it will cost, but hey, Soon you'll have even more ways to watch Jersey Shore, huh? That's good. What are you guys laughing at? This? This is what you're laughing at? Yeah, the bear with the salmon is awesome. They're fighting because it's streaming and they're are fighting in the so stream. so easily amused. It's ridiculous. What are you <laughs> The bears in the stream. I know, I know. It's really special. Uh, get ready for Mexploitation fans. Machete is coming back. Yeah, director Robert Rodriguez is getting ready to make part two of a planned trilogy of films about the avenging day laborer. And star Danny Trejo is in talks to reprise his role. If that wasn't enough badassness for you, Brian De Palma is going to remake the movie Heat with Jason Statham. Now, this isn't a remake of the Robert De Niro and Al Pacino shoot fest. It's a redo of the 1986 action thriller about a gambling addict who rescues a friend with his fist. Yeah, it originally starred Burt Reynolds, so let's hope that Statham pays tribute to the original with a sweet stash. Yeah. And finally, I bet you thought those Bourne movies were done, didn't you? Yeah. You thought wrong. Jason Bourne may be out of the picture, but this time all-around badass Jeremy Renner plays a rogue CIA agent who finds himself in some familiar amnesia-stricken territory. Check it out. What's your name? Kenneth Kitson. Where are you from? Reno. Will you give yourself to this program? Yes, sir. Right hand, please. Well, that has healed well. You need 
diminish sensation? No. There is nothing that you wouldn't do for this country. You have the strength to do what's necessary. Welcome to the program. Jason Bourne was the tip of the iceberg. Who the hell is he? He's an outcome agent. He's treadstone without the inconsistency. We have never seen evaluations like this. Comic-Cons don't just happen in New York and San Diego and the cubicles of our staffers. That's why we sent our viewer army to the Big Easy for the New Orleans, or Nowlands, Comic-Con. Hey, Attack of the Show, this is Kirk Stoniker uh, reporting to you at Wizard World's New Orleans Comic-Con. There's going to be merch booths, celebrities, panels, everything you can imagine. So why are we sitting here talking? Let's go take a look. So, uh, I was wondering, y'all, what's, what's on the horizon here for Chu? We are about to release issue 24 on a 60-issue run. We're releasing uh, the fifth trade uh, in April. We've got a deal with Showtime, and Stephen Hopkins is going to direct. He's doing House of Lies right now. He's done Shameless and uh, Californication in 24. My character's name is Saint Sped, bounty hunter of the black and gold. I like to come to cons, right? Cons are expensive, so is cosplay. So I will sign autographs just until I've made the money to come out here, and then I'm done, and then I run around and have a good time. Now I hear y'all have an awesome, awesome movie coming up. Can you tell us more about that? Uh, we just got picked up by Anchor Bay. It's a little uh, grindhouse movie. I worked with uh, Robert Rodriguez. Kind of gave me the idea of maybe doing my own little exploitation movie. And so we raised a little bit of money. I wrote it in uh, about three weeks. I'm more proud of this movie than anything I've ever done before. You're not going to like where I put it next. What have you got going on lately? Pool Boy Drowning Out the Fury. Me and Danny Trejo did it together. I play a Vietnam vet who returns to America to find out that all of the pool cleaning jobs have been taken over by illegal aliens. If you like Naked Gun Airplane, you'll love it. If you are offended by political incorrectness, then don't waste hard time. What other con would have a Mardi Gras parade right in it? You know, the Intergalactic Crew of Chewbacca, and we're here to rock your world. Yeah. Yeah. Go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Lord, I want to be. How hot and how bad did that costume smell? You think a gun duck smells bad? Wookiees smell even worse. <laughs> It's been a long, long day, and I'm ending it here with none other than Miss Carrie. Yeah, this is the best place to end it. And that's us signing off. Thank you again for making me part of your viewer army. Ah! <laughs> oh, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Right now, we're going to review the hell out of a gadget. For those of you hoping for something smaller than a tablet, but bigger than a cell phone, Toshiba brings us the 7-inch Thrive tablet. A 1.2 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor powers the Thrive, which is running Android's 3.2 Honeycomb platform. 
front and rear facing cameras also come standard on a tablet that weighs just under 14 ounces. Put the Toshiba Thrive 7 in your pocket for 379 bucks. Simmer down, ladies. Matt Myra is back, everybody! Yeah. Yeah. Matt, you brought the Toshiba Thrive 7. It's the smaller version of the 10-inch the Thrive that we saw last summer, actually. Yeah. Um, very similar design. I think uh, people enjoyed the fact that the 10-inch the version had a lot of full-size ports, USB, HDMI, etc. Sure. How does the 7-inch stack up? Well, it does have a number of ports. First of all, thanks for being here on Blazer Day. You're welcome. Uh, I'm glad you got the, glad you got the memo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, blue, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are a good number of ports on here, uh, but they're tucked behind a very flimsy cover uh, that they seem to like to put on things. But that, that feels like Thanks, that, that looks like it's going to last seven or eight times when you when you pull it open. That's fine, uh, right? I think twelve is the limit. Okay. Uh, the form factor on here is nice. Some people love the seven-inch size. Mm -hmm. Makes less and less sense to me as the phones get bigger. These tablets. It's an odd sort of in-between, right? It uh, yeah, it is a weird size, uh, but people love them, I guess. I don't know. Uh, the rubber <laughs> back is cool. It kind of feels like you're holding a tire, which is an odd feeling when you're holding a tablet. Always comfy. And it weighs just under a pound, which is okay, because you can throw it in your bag or in your pocket. Okay. And it works. All right. Uh, now, with the screen on this, relatively high resolution for the tablet uh, of this size, 1280 by 800, so you get a really high pixel density in there. Um, yeah. is, is it noticeable? It is, actually. Uh, you end up with 209 DPI. So, to put that into perspective, the Kindle, Fire, and the Nook Color both have 169 DPI. Okay. And that's going to come through when you're reading and watching movies mostly, right? Absolutely, yeah. Text and movies looks much, much sharper on this. I actually found my eyes getting less strained reading this than on the Kindle Fire. Okay. Uh, the screen is 7 inches, but it's not IPS, which is in-plane switching, which means that when you look at it at different angles, you can still see it. But the viewing angle isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, I can still kind of make out yeah. a, a rough screen from yeah, here, which is really good. It's got a pretty decent viewing angle for not being IPS. Mm -hmm. uh, and the color's excellent, uh, decent reproduction with a little bit below average brightness. Well, is the, is the pixel density going to make up for that lack of brightness when it yeah, comes to eye strain? It really is. I really, really read this for... Hours. I read, well, as long as the battery lasted. We'll get to that. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that clearly <laughs> exciting pro, <laughs> pro point of this device. We'll Stay get to that tuned, America. Yeah, they're riveted. Uh, yeah, but, you know, it, it, it won't strain your eyes when you're okay. reading. Well, let's talk performance. The yeah. Thrive runs Honeycomb, packs an NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor with a gig of RAM. That sounds impressive, but I noticed it chugging a little bit. Did you see that as well? Yeah, it's not really the fastest thing in the world. You can see the Android lag when you're scrolling websites. This is our website, mm -hmm. and it just is rendering constantly. Whenever you're scrolling, after it's loaded, scroll up or That's down. That's right. It should have render. enough memory to store that whole page. You would think. It has a gig of RAM. Right. What is it doing with the RAM? I don't know. Uh, Honeycomb is starting to show its age a bit. Yeah, look at that. It's un okay, anyway. Yeah. There's a... I'm sure there's a really beautiful active wallpaper behind <laughs> that that is taking yeah. up 700 megs of that RAM. I don't know what's doing it, and you yeah. won't either. Uh, there's not much laid over here as far as UI. Uh, it still lags, though. It's All right, well... Speaking of lag, yeah. let's talk cameras, oh. which is an odd thing to have a lot of lag on in this day and age. Mobile sure. devices have figured this out, but there's two cameras on the Thrive, one in front at 2 megapixels. The rear camera's 5 megapixels with an LED flash, but the shutter speed is just, we should just probably show it, It's the it, right? worst thing in the world. Well, that's one way to put it, yeah. That uh, is one way to put it. It really is. Uh, first of all, the front camera's fine for video chatting, whatever you want to do with that, great. Uh, the back camera, they put it here, which is where your hands go. Okay. Uh, so let's open up the camera app. Again. Yep. Your hand looks amazing. Oh, oh, I mean, that's perfect placement. That's weird. But now let's take a look at the shutter speed. Kevin, if you could hold still for... Well, oh. Actually, I'll, you know, take a picture of me. Okay, I will. You're just the fine. user at home. Uh, is it tap to focus? You just, just... All you just do is hit the button. Okay, and, here uh, we go. I'll stay and still. I'm going to press it now. Okay, you got it. Uh, no, wait, wait. Hold, uh, hold on, and... Wait. Oh, did that... There it goes! Oh. Hey! We did it! So gather your friends at the beginning of the birthday party, and then as it's wrapping up, yeah. you'll have I, one photo of everybody. I said this in rehearsal, but I really could have a police sketch artist draw me faster than that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely good. Um, he had big eyebrows, round face. Done. <laughs> um, and was very blurry because he was leaving <laughs> leaving the frame before, before that thing took it. All it right. is what it is. So will the battery last through a single photo? <laughs> mm. The battery's terrible. 
Okay. <laughs> it lasts. You can take four second photos and you'll get through about 20 of those before the battery dies. Well, what is uh, the, I mean, hour get, wise, what do we get? You get four hours. If you're using it pretty wow. heavy, you get four hours. On a tablet, that's not great. The Galaxy 7 we uh, reviewed in December actually got seven hours of battery life. Wow. So okay. that just puts that in perspective for you. Well, and also to keep this whole review in perspective, they're yeah. practically giving these things away. So oh don't worry God. about that. The Toshiba Thrive tablet, it's only going to cost you 379 bucks. What? There is a recession happening, right? They know yeah. that. Okay, yeah. anyway. Uh, so what's the verdict at that price? We're giving it a three out of five. Wow. Now, the reason for the three out of five is the screen. The screen is great. So if you want, you know, if you want a full Android tablet with no, no real UI over it, the Thrive 7 isn't the worst option in the world, but if you're looking for something to stream media and read on, mm -hmm. get spend 200 bucks, get the Kindle Fire. There we go. That's it for today's Gadget Prawn. Matt Myra, everybody. Thank you, Yay! sir. Appreciate it. Thank if you want to snap one more photo before the show's over, you should probably, probably get started now. It's not working. Okay. Sarah has an important public service announcement. Don't you, Sarah? I do. Guys, there's a new episode of Blade this Friday at 11 p.m. How excited are you? So excited. That is the answer. This time, Blade and his lady friends spice things up by learning about how to use magic against vampires. For more info on the show, not on White Magic, go to g4tv.com slash marvel. Stay tuned. Ray Park is here live. I'm hoping he turns Kevin into a blue ghost. Stick around. Yeah. The feed is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote. He's some of your favorite characters in some of your favorite movies, and here he is, being a total chatterbox. Position already. Please welcome back Ray Park. <laughs> All right, sir. Yes, good to be back. Thank so, you. so good to have you back. It, apparently, it's been almost 15 years. It has since episode one. It has. No what time. happened? I was 22, 20, turning 23 on the movie, and now I'm 37. I've got some gray hairs to show it. So. Yeah, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, it, now it's in 3D. And, and how is it? Is it awesome? It, yeah. Yeah, I saw it last night for the first time in like 10, 12 years. You haven't seen it since it originally premiered, right? I haven't seen it on a big screen. Mm -hmm. Of course, when I'm editing my demo reel to send out for other work, <laughs> right. you know, so I'm sort of putting the best bits. <laughs> Cutting around all the <laughs> other actors, chewing up the scenery. Come on, let me get my reel together. Yeah. Uh, so you've sliced it up, but now you, you, you got to see it again. And I heard that you were you were watching the movie, looking at things that you might have done differently, or looking for areas to to like yeah. sort of improve things. It brought, it brought back memories, you know, like instant memories of being on set. Mm -hmm. Good times, and um, there's a few things that I was like, you know what? I, if you know, it was my first acting gig. Mm -hmm. I, would, I might have done a few little things differently, but I think I did okay. You know, were you doing a lot of reacting to giant cubes and, and blue walls? Like, isn't it hard to critique the way you would have reacted to a sphere? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when I was with the um, Walking Palace in Italy, uh -huh. and I had the contact lenses in for about four hours, five hours. And with the hu humidity there, I couldn't keep my eyes open. And then, so we weren't too sure when I was going to be on. Mm -hmm. So I had to do the scene where I was walking, and Palpatine and Sidious is there in the hologram, and I'm with the two aliens. I just had to keep my eyes open because I couldn't keep them open. And, <laughs> and I wasn't allowed to take the lenses out just to give my eyes five minutes. So it was like one of those, like... So there's, was, a, there's a blue extra of you doing the walk, saber in hand, a little clear eyes. Yeah, there's a little. <laughs> no, no, I swear I'm an evil. I'm an evil lord. Hold on a second. I'm just getting a little red. I couldn't make any. Fa couldn't make any facial expressions Jesus. apart from keep my eyes open for ten seconds, and that was one of those moments where I, I wish I'd, I, you know, attacked it a little bit differently. I, w I wouldn't be too concerned. I don't think it's. <laughs> I don't think it got in the way of the of the character too much. But uh, now your kids, you know, four and seven. Yes. And you had yet to show them Star Wars. I've never shown them. Uh, I mean, I've seen clips of mm -hmm. maybe some of the things I've done. I tried to get them to sit down and watch G.I. Joe 1, 
when we first got it on DVD. 20 minutes, and then they were jumping off the couch doing somersaults and flips. That's, a, you know, that's so. what I imagine breakfast is like at your house. Like, to, to, to get a bowl of kicks, a kid is doing a cartwheel flip over a chair, and then kung fu kicking a box of cereal into a bowl. That's my plan. I'm, I'm working on it. You're them. teaching. I'm I mean, you are, you are teaching them martial in a, arts, right? In a sort of subliminal way. I'm not, like, getting my gi on and going, right, today we're doing horse dance outside. Right. <laughs> you know, exactly. It's like, Wake up, block this. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, well, at least you're awake. That's what my dad used to do to me. He used to go, whoop And I'm like, Oh, and he goes, I'm always going to test you. You have to. So it was one of living at home with my right. dad. He was always punching and kicking me. So I was always nervous. I was like a nervous wreck at home. <laughs> so I, this story has a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to do that to my kids. Sure. So now Nerve had these fabulous swords that are with foam. They still hurt when they hurt your fingers and they right. smack them on the side. So I've started to show my kids some moves, you know, like some spins on a trampoline and... And I'm trying to be the goofy dad, you know? I'm right. trying to show off and say, look, daddy can do this, because one day when I'm 40, I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> so watch me now. <laughs> yeah. Your house has got to be like uh, the loft from Big. I imagine just a, a, a arcade machines and a giant trampoline a, and you're I'm bouncing a, around on it. I'm a big kid, yeah. So what, what did your kids think? Because here, I mean, you're, you're watching it. It's in 3D. It's their old man on screen. It's it, such, such a great character as well. I mean, did they go... There he is, that's my... My son did, because we got there a little bit late, and so we were sitting near the front, mm -hmm. good seats, and uh, as soon as Darth Maul came on, my son, like, sort of sat up and went, Daddy, that's you! Daddy, that's you! So I was like, oh, yeah, 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 cool, cool. Okay, sat down, because I didn't know who was behind me. No, and... you got to go the other way with it. <laughs> damn right that's me, stand up. <laughs> See that right there? <laughs> I would, it was, I would totally go that route with it. It was sweet. <laughs> it, that, it, was, it was worth a million or whatever. It was... Um, it was great to share that moment with my kids. I'd never seen a movie so to see awesome, it in 3D. Man. It was very good. cool. And now, so I know you, you went through rigorous training for, for the new G.I. Joe film as well. Yeah. And, I, and you've been, uh, I've been tweeting about battle ropes. Yeah. Is this like a new, is this like a BattleBot series? <laughs> or is this like a competitive knot tying thing that you're doing? What's battle ropes? Well, a good friend of mine called, uh, from back in London, he, uh, he calls them battle ropes. And I ended up working with this trainer in New Orleans. The, all of the cast members were working with him. Mm -hmm. And he's a really good trainer. And I had been training up for G.I. Joe, the sequel, for, since it was released in the cinema. And I was just starting to burn out while I was on the shoot. And I thought, I can't work with this guy. His name's Aaron. He's a good trainer. And he had these ropes on the side, and he had some things to hang from. Right. Like, I this wasn't a gaffer on the set. This is a certified trainer. Yeah, this is a trainer. Mr. Okay. He's Mr. New Orleans. And, okay. uh, and he just worked. My, my wife came and joined in. It was just great to work these ropes. I mean, some simple exercises, just doing waves with the but ropes. What are they? Like just giant, thick, heavy? Thick, yeah, thick little roping ropes that I used to climb as a gymnast. Mm -hmm. But now on the ground, you've got this plethora of like moves and exercise you can do just to burn out your biceps and your lats and your shoulders. And... That sounds absolutely terrible. It is. I'm going <laughs> to leave that to you, right? <laughs> I love it, man. It, it's, it, again, I, I was saying before the interview, one of the nicest guys I've ever met. It's so, so great to see great things happen to such a genuinely nice person. Oh, I so, appreciate it. Thank so congrats you. on the re-release as well. Yeah. I, hope, uh, I hope you're getting pennies for every Darth Maul figure that's sold from here now. <laughs> Ray Park, everybody. Thank you. Such a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Battle Ropes. The Phantom Menace opens in theaters in 3D on Friday. You knew that, though. Right now, we're going to send it over to Sarah in glorious 2D. Oh. Yes. Okay. That's battle roping. Awesome! It's time to attack <laughs> these sticks, rods, and batons. Whether you're trying to add a little flair to your holiday feast or set up a romantic dinner with the Sith Lord of your dreams, the guys over at Think Geek have the answer. Enter the Star Wars lightsaber candlestick. This solid metal chrome-plated candlestick is a scaled-down recreation of Darth Vader's lightsaber and comes with three no-drip red candles for those nights you're feeling particularly sippy. If you're looking to shed a little light on the dark side, you can grab your own lightsaber for about 40 bucks at thinkgeek.com. Now, are you sick and tired of being able or not being able to drink from the puddles on the side of the road? I know, I know, I know. Tell me about it. Well, now you can with the Steripen Freedom Freedom UV Water Purifier. Just remove the cap, stick the UV rod into the water, and voila! In just 48 seconds, you'll have a glass of water that's 99.9% .9 free of bacteria, viruses, and all those other nasty things that'll make you poop. <laughs> Head to SteriPen.com and pick up a purifier for around 120 bucks. And finally, if you're tired of bending over on your walks to pick up your puppy's poo and you're looking for a space-age alternative, 
than the people over at Poly Clean Tech had you in mind when developing the Ash Poopy. Ash Poopy, that's just fun to say. Say it, Ash Poopy, Ash Poopy. Ah, see, it's fun. Simply scoop, press the button, and the Ash Poopy will incinerate your dog's leftovers into a pile of 100% sterile ash. The Ash Poopy is still in the concept stage, so keep curving your dog for now. You can expect to see a consumer version in early 2012. <laughs> Stay tuned. We've got some apps to spice up your love life. No, 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 not like that. Remember good old Minesweeper? Well, now it's been zombified. Thanks to Zombie Minesweeper, a re envisioning of the classic desktop PC game that introduces some much needed blood splattering. Step into the shoes of Little Girl, who's lost amidst the zombie apocalypse and tasked with finding a way to safety by navigating zombie infested backyards. Of course, it wouldn't be Minesweeper without the mines. And zombie dodging must be done while avoiding the dangerous terrain. It works just like the classic game, providing numbers to indicate proximity to nearby mines. But it's still the rise of the undead. So, of course, there's an array of bombs and weapons to pick up to defend against the rabid walkers. Upon reaching the end of a level, you're granted the pleasure of blowing up all the mines with the flick of a switch and watching that zombie blood fly. Pick it up now exclusively on iOS for a buck ninety-nine. Tomorrow on Attack of the Show. Sopranos wise guy Steven Van Zant will be here to snitch on his new Netflix series, Lilyhammer. Then, Circa Survive singer Anthony Green joins us for a live performance on our set. And we rate Nikon's new camera with the world's fastest autofocus in Gadget Prawn. It's Attack of the Show tomorrow at 7. That looks like a show to me. I mean, I just saw that. That yeah, looks like a show looks, I want to be a part it of. It looks good. Yeah, it's going to be, be a show, Kevin. I'm going to be here. Valentine's is just around the corner. Yes, and of course... That's how I did it in the thing. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Of course, there's an app for it. <laughs> Whether you're looking to reignite the spark in your relationship, or you just want to break the ice on your quest for a new one, these Valentine's Day inspired apps might just do the trick. First up, be prepared to get a little physical with Fingal. Fingal is a cooperative puzzle game that will have you tapping into the thrill of physical contact with gameplay that resembles a sort of a twister game for your fingers. <sighs> To get started, each person chooses a color and places their fingers on the matching buttons. Then, drag your buttons onto their corresponding targets and keep them there. Over the course of the game, the targets begin moving, requiring you to get all touchy-feely with your partner in order to complete challenges. And if you're thinking that someone could somehow cheat and avoid all that intimacy, well, they'd only be fighting the inevitable, as the game was designed specifically with touch in mind. What are you waiting for? Let your fingers do the talking with Fingal for only 99 cents on the iPad. But perhaps you're looking to add a little more exotic flavor into your seduction toolkit. For you budding Casanovas, we have Trip Lingo Romance Edition. Derived from the fantastic Trip Lingo language instruction apps, the Romance Edition teaches users useful phrases for 10 different languages, including French, Spanish, Japanese, German, Mandarin, and even the Pereira preferred language of love, Portuguesa. Vamos para algum lugar para gente ficar sozinho. The app lets you customize your phrases into convenient lists, which you can turn to when you're meeting someone for the first time, or when you're looking to turn your flirt on. Wow. <laughs> Slang sliders allow you to change the tone of your phrases from formal to casual to slang. And you can even crank it up to crazy for those moments when you really want to go for it. You're sure to become a regular Don Juan after picking up Trip Lingo Romance Edition for free from the iTunes App Store. So get on out there and put your moves to the test with the aid of these new Valentine's Day inspired apps. Also, right now, to thanks to Matt Myrick for Sport Jeff Wong, Kurt Sonica, Huh? Oh, and of course, Rick Park and Sam.